Hello and welcome to episode 5. In this episode, um, I'm going to have the result of um, reading exact voltages from a dial resistor, the temperature sensor and the light dependent resistor. Here I've got the light dependent resistor circuit set up um, and I'm just going to do this over the sensor and then I'll just uh, flick into a screen recording and I'll show you what happens to the values on the screen. Here I'm just going to press enter to start running the program. And as you can see, it's running the program. I'm currently getting 0.7. If I put the uh, hand over the thing, I get about 0.1. And I've got a little bike light here. And if I move that over the sensor, I get values like 2.8. Uh, that I have got 3 uh, volts before, but really, it doesn't really go above 2.8 normally. And this program just runs for uh, several thousand loops. And... Uh, that's what we're going to be looking at today. Now, before we jump into the code, I'd just like to point out one little thing. Now, for the light-dependent resistor to work, because um, it's only got two wires, there's no ground, um, I had to put a resistor in just here. Now, this, I think, it took me a long time to figure out how to get the light-dependent resistor to work, uh, because I'm not, I'm quite new to this sort of thing. Uh, so I had to do a little bit of research on the internet, and finally I found the solution. Uh, but I'll come back to that later. I'm focusing mainly on the code this time, because the hardware is mainly the same. I'm using the same circuit as in the last video, um, so there's not really much to cover on that front. Um, also, I guess there's not really that much to cover on the code front. However, I have um, simplified the A to, D, um, A to D function, so instead of it being in a main, I've put it into its own little library and class, uh, which makes it really easy to uh, read. And also, um, I've made a little header file for it as well. Um, so what you can see here um, is I've got uh, the same sort of code which was in the main function, but I've uh, changed the shutdown. I've changed the original values which were in here to actual um, the variables which are set in the constructor function. And these variables just mean that when you create a new one. Um, if you're using two um, two A to D chips at the same time, uh, they work completely independently of each other, which is actually really useful. And of course, I put the uh, little clock files in as well. But if you look at my header file, they're actually privated. Um, so now I'll just flick into the uh, voltage output file, as you can see here. Uh, this is what I'm using as the main for my program. What it does here is... Um, this is uh, the act, the exact uh, equation that I'm using. So as you can see, the analog voltage is the value of the chip times the input voltage all over 124, which is the uh, maximum output of the analog to digital chip. Um, now here I'm just initializing the sensor with my constructor with my constructor function, um, and then here it's doing the reading of the sensor. So these cumulative ones, these are important because if you don't if you don't average it out, you get very skippy values that seem to jump around an awful lot. So this loop just runs ten times, reads ten times, um, gets the voltage value and the sensor value, puts them in, into the cumulative um, numbers, and then slows pauses the program for a second and then runs again. This means that you get less skippy values because this code here averages them out. I'm sure there must be a simpler way of doing this. Um, I could do it in a little function, which would have the same effect, um, just having the argument of cumulative voltage or cumulative sensor, but I couldn't be bothered to do it for, what, six lines of code. I might do that later, though, because it is actually quite useful. So um, with these cumulative sensors, you can see I times by 100, which pushes it to the left, then I floor it, and then I divide it by a thousand again. This just means that I don't get uh, values um, which I don't get values which um, are kind of um, with loads of decimal places because that can be really annoying. So that's what the floor does. So this means that you get a maximum of four decimal places. And then what it does here is it prints it out to the console. So as you can say, it says the exact reading. Uh, was a cumulative sensor value, and the exact voltage 
it was a cumulative voltage value. Then this put char line, this pushes the um, printing out character back to the start of the line you've just printed, which means it always prints on the same line. Then delay 10, that just slows the program again. Um, and then once this has run a thousand times, because I only had it on an infinite loop, but that actually crashed my Raspberry Pi. Um, but this fixed it, and it gives you plenty of time. So I believe it gives you around 20 seconds um, of time just to fiddle around and uh, look at the different values. And then at the end of the program, I print a new line. This is quite important. This is quite important because otherwise it prints the Pi at Raspberry Pi and uh, directory name over the top of what you just over the top of what you've just read, which is not a very nice way to end the program because you can't see what the last value was. Um, so that's why I've got that there. Also, one more thing that I'd like to show you from the a to d.cpp file is in this read function, I can improve it by um, putting putting something like um, the channel name in there, which would mean you can read from both channels without having to change your um, setup at all, and it would mean that you can read from two sensors at the same time, which is quite useful, and you'd be able to set this up um, so you could read from whatever sense you sense you want. Um, however, also I might put that into here, because if I put it into um, the initialization functions, then you can have two different objects for the different sensors. So you might have one object for I don't know a light sensor and one object for a temperature sensor, which is really really useful um, because it means you can use them completely independently of each other. So I think that might actually be a better solution. Um, so now I will just show you. Um, the modification that I had to make um, to get my light dependent resistor and I hope I've explained the code well and any questions uh, do post them in the comments. Now, as I said earlier I had some difficulties getting the light dependent resistor to work. Now the reason this is is because for example with this sensor there are three pins ha as you can see there however the light dependent resistor only has two pins instead of the normal three uh, for the temperature sensor as well, as you can see, which is down there. Now, the reason they have three is because for um, the circuit to be complete, it has to be connected to ground, and the analog to digital converter uh, doesn't complete a circuit um, when you connect a sensor to it. Um, now, the problem I had with this was if I connected the sensor directly to ground without the little resistor just here, it would uh, always read naught on the output from the analog to digital converter and if I attached it on the opposite side of the light dependent resistor I'd always get values roughly around 3.3 uh, because that's the input voltage to the resistor so I had to put this resistor in here which completes the circuit but puts in a little bit of resistance between the ground and the negative pin of the light dependent resistor. This is just enough to get different different voltages from the uh, from the um, light dependent resistor, which then the uh, uh, analog to digital converter can check. Now I don't need to do this uh, for the other sensors, so I'll just do a little time lapse of me can changing it over, and then I'll explain what's how it's different again. So now I've changed over. All you can see is I've taken out the resistor um, and I've added and I've connected the third pin of the uh, dial des dial resistor to the ground. And the same applies. So I can quickly take this out and uh, put the temperature sensor in. There you go. Now the temperature sensor in is in. And that works exactly the same. It's not very exciting uh, me showing you the temperature sensor or the light uh, or the dial resistor because they're quite predictable. In fact, the temperature sensor hardly changes at all, and it's quite hard to heat it up um, because it's quite slow to respond. So, um, as I said, I, I only showed you the light dependent resistor uh, because it's an interesting one. Um, so. Um, I hope that all made sense to you. Uh, I probably won't show you anything 
I'll probably finish off with just a little quick demonstration of the dial resistor and reading the exact voltages from that. Um, hopefully next time, if I calibrate the sensors, I'll be able to read actual readings. Uh, so I'll be able to calibrate the temperature sensor so it tells you what the temperature in the room at the moment is. Um, I might be able to t calibrate the light sensor so it sees how many lumens uh, it's getting. Uh, lumens is a measure of light. Um, and also, I'm, I'd like to get some data logging features into the pipeline. Uh, so, reading out into a text file, which I can then put into my computer and then I can graph it. That'd be really cool. Um, now, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope that's everything for that video. If there's anything I've missed out or you've got any questions, do post them in the comments.